హాయ్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ దిస్ ఈస్ డాక్టర్ పర్సనోడి సుమంత్ కన్సల్టెంట్ పీడియాట్రిషియన్ కార్డ్ బ్లడ్ బ్యాంకింగ్ మే నాట్ బీ న్యూ టు మెనీ యంగ్ కపుల్స్ హూ హ్యావ్ ఆల్రెడీ స్పెండ్ ఆర్ ప్లానింగ్ టు స్పెండ్ గుడ్ అమౌంట్ ఆఫ్ దేర్ మనీ ఆన్ ఇట్ సో డూ యూ థింక్ ఈజ్ ఇట్ రియలీ వర్త్ ఈ డూ యూ థింక్ ది మార్కెటింగ్ కంపెనీస్ విల్ టెల్ యూ ఆల్ ది నీడెడ్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ సర్ప్రైజింగ్లీ మెనీ ఆఫ్ మై డాక్టర్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ టూ హ్యావ్ నో ఐడియా అబౌట్ దిస్ అండ్ ఆర్ నాట్ ఏబుల్ టు టేక్ అ డెసిషన్ ఆన్ దర్ ఓన్ so i have decided to address all the important queries and the information which marketing companies don't want you to know regarding card blood banking which will help you in taking decision whether to go for it or not so pause the video till end to those parents who have already planned to get umbilical cord banking for their upcoming baby here is an important information these stem cells which are stored are not useful for the same child so please know the facts no way these cells are going to helpful for the same child the reason for this is if the child has genetic disease the stem cells will also have the same genetic pattern thus making it not helpful and i'll give more detail information regarding this in later part of the video but this cord blood could be used to benefit a sibling or another immediate family member with leukemia or such diseases and to those who are not aware of this umbilical cord blood banking watch this video till last coming to the contents of the video i have selected these important eight queries which are asked regularly in our clinics and you should definitely know the answers to these decide whether to go for it or not now we'll see what is cord blood banking umbilical cord used to be thrown away at birth but now many parents store the blood for the future health of their child in a simple language this is called cord blood banking in medical language this is a process of collecting potentially life saving stem cells from the umbilical cord and placenta and storing them for future use stem cells are nothing but an immature cells that can assume the form of other cells under special conditions if provided Cord blood banks freeze and store the cord blood samples after collection and keep them ready for the future use. Many parents have expressed their concern regarding the safety of this procedure and keep repeatedly asking are there any complications for this procedure. Remember this is very safe and harmless to both the mother and newborn. But the problem is the current recommendation says that cord clamping after delivery should be delayed. so that baby gets the blood in the cord which prevents the anemia in the baby but if you opt for cord blood banking this may not be possible and there are many chances of having anemia in the baby so where is it stored there are two options one is public cord banks and the other one is private cord banks coming to the public cord banks they don't charge anything for storage and any donation made is available for anyone who needs it and the bank may also use the donated cord blood for further research coming to the private cord blanks they will store the donated blood for use by the donor and family members only they can be expensive and these banks charge a fee for processing and an annual fee for storage technically there is no expiry date and these stem cells can be preserved for a lifetime but scientifically evidence exists that they can be stored for up to 24 years To those parents who wish to do this banking for their upcoming child and are wondering about the guidelines or norms in our country here is the answer Yes we do have guidelines in our country These banks are permitted only under license and monitoring by the Central Drug Standards Controlling Organization and the cord blood banks have to comply with the Drugs and Cosmetics Act also How can one know about the CDSCO licensed banking services available in our country The CDSCO website provides a list of all the licensed UCB banks in our country. I'll provide the link in the description so do check out for the list of the banks. Now coming to the important question is there any scientific credibility to storing UCB for the future self use? Several international bodies such as American Academy of Pediatrics, American Society for Blood and Marrow Transplant, Royal College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists, American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, etc., etc., do not recommend routine private banking for future self-use. So, if a marketing company tells you that this is recommended by someone, please don't believe it blindly. 
the reasons for not recommending this private banking are the likelihood of the stored blood being used for transplant transplantation is very small probably as low as 0.05 percentage to 0.04 percent in the first 20 years of life and the other reason is stem cell transplant using an individual's own cord blood cannot be recommended for genetic disorders now we'll see what are the concerns regarding the advertisements by cord blood banks the misleading and luring advertisement by private cord blood banks is an area of major concern such ads often involve celebrities as their brand ambassadors prompting storage as a status symbol the young and expecting parents who are anxious or vulnerable to the emotional marketing of the private cord blood banks personally i have spoken to many parents who doesn't even know that the cells are not useful for the same child they are emotionally as well as economically burdened to store the umbilical cord blood cells as a form of biological insurance for the future use one famous misleading statement told by all the private cord blood companies that the child's own umbilical cord blood cells can protect it from the 80 different medical conditions and remember the statement is not scientifically supported another propaganda made on the websites of these private banks is the utility of the stem cells in several incurable diseases through logs and testimonials of the patient's doctors Moreover, banks also indulge in practices like following up the expectant mother and healthcare professionals, offering them incentives to for availing the facilities. Look at this ad by one of the private cord bank company. They are even offering a two-night, three-day free vacation trip to couples if you opt for their cord banking services. And the cost of this storage is starting from nearly seventy-five thousand and will go on. and recently heard these companies are coming up even with emi options for those who are not affordable to pay at once such is their marketing strategies and no wonder parents fall a trap for this without knowing anything now we'll see what are the general concerns regarding the banking practices and are people being taken advantage of yes as mentioned before parents are not given accurate information regarding the utility of stored tissues There is no clarity if the tissues stored are viable as there have been several instances when the tissues were asked for transplantation they were found to be without any viable cells the customer has no idea what happens to the stored unit if the facility is closes or in natural calamities there are many several gray areas that need to be addressed so if something fraud happens where can one complain against the umbilical cord blood banks Complaints regarding the unethical practices can be made to zonal offices of CDSCO with copy to a central CDSCO and ICMR one can also move to a consumer court If you ask me which cord blood company should the baby's umbilical cord be stored my answer would be public bank Public bank is always the best option except in very few conditions Private storage of the cord blood is advisable only when there is an elder child in the family with a condition treatable with these cells and the mother is expecting the next baby coming to which bank to be chosen it is solely one's own judgment to decide on which company is the best and make sure the company is licensed by cdsco coming to the final question of this video topic whether you should store your baby's cord blood it depends on who you ask Although commercial cord blood banks often bill their services as a biological insurance against future diseases but the blood doesn't often get used one study says that the chance that a child will use their cord blood over their lifetime is between 1 in 400 and 1 in 2 lakhs the american college of obstetricians and gynecologists neither recommends nor advises against cord blood banking but along with american academy of pediatrics and indian academy of pediatrics it cautions parents against private cord blood banking here's the reason why collection and storage costs at private cord blood banks are very high the other affective treatments may be available that are very less expensive the chance of privately banked cord blood being used by your child is extremely low in short The American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Medical Association recommend against storing cord blood as a form of biological insurance because the benefits are 
too remote to justify the cost. The American Academy of Pediatrics does recommend cord blood banking if an infant has a full sibling with a malignant or genetic condition treatable with cord blood transplantation. These conditions include leukemia, immune deficiencies such as severe combined immune deficiency, Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, aplastic anemia, sickle cell anemia, Kravis disease, thalassemia and very few other rare diseases. Now we'll see what the future holds. No one knows how stem cells will be used in the future, but researchers hope that they may be used to treat many conditions like Alzheimer's, diabetes, heart failure, spinal cord damage and others. It's possible that storing your child's cord blood cells now may be useful one day in combating this disease. But for now, these treatments are only theories. And it's also not clear if stem cells from the cord blood as opposed to stem cells from other source will be useful in these potential treatments. Research into the benefits of cord blood banking is ongoing. So finally, cord blood banking is an entirely personal decision that parents need to be taken after research thoroughly. And talk to your obstetrician or pediatrician to find out whether it's right for your family. Hope I have answered all the important issues and if you have any further queries, please do ask us in the comment section. And thanks for watching. Please do like and share the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.